Okay, Eric here with 30 by 40 Design Workshop. Today I want to continue on with the studio design project and I wanted to talk about uh, light, the lighting plan today and how architects come up with lighting plans and um, sort of look at the one that we've developed for the studio. Now you'll notice on this drawing that the floor plan is kind of grayed out and we do that on lighting plans so that really the dominant information is the lighting and here I've rendered it in red and basically what a lighting plan does is it depicts the fixtures, so things like pendants or wall sconces. It depicts uh, where the electrical panel is going to go, where the wiring and switching goes, where the switches are, uh, and where the sort of outlets, the receptacles are. Um, there's a whole level of additional information that we can layer on there. We can tell them exactly what fixtures we're going to use. We can give them sort of exact um, heights for mounting the fixtures at, but we won't get into that level of detail today. In general, it's enough to know that the lighting plan is just about the switching and the fixtures and how those lights sort of uh, generate the, the components of a, of a professional lighting plan. Now on this, this indicates the upper level here, and at the upper level it is a vaulted space, and we have two lofts on either end, so I'll just kind of sketch that out. The main level space is our studio and music recording area in the center here. We have a window that looks out to the forest here. We have our big sliding doors here and our main entry sits along here. And we have a storage room that flanks at this end here, firewood storage at this end. Now, I want to talk about, for a moment, just the initial concept of the structure. And we've always been talking about this as being the lens for the seasons. And what happens um, based on our elevation layout and our addition of these slot windows and doors, we end up having a fairly bright zone in the center of the plan. Remember, we have two linear skylights at the top that we figured out from our model we, were actually really necessary. Uh, so we have this essentially this bright zone in the center and we have the ability to close that off based on the season, based on the time of day, based on the mood. Um, so this is our light zone in the center. Now the flanking edges of the second level, the upper level, have a loft space at either end. Which means on the main floor here that this zone on either end will have a ceiling, a lower ceiling. And we've decided that that's going to be a a uh, nice Douglas fir framing that will span this way. Um, so these are inherently darker spaces, especially as contrasted with the amount of glass that's occurring in the center of the space here. So when we look at this and start layering on this concept about the lens of the seasons, um, as the building acting as a lens for the seasons, we want to think about you know how we can sort of bolster that concept with our lighting plan. And one of the ways to do that is to make this sort of fixtures as changeable and as movable as the sort of partitions on the outside and these panels that fold up and fold down and the panels that will conceal the skylights. And because it's such a small space, I think we need to do that in a really simple way. And the idea that I had was, um, because we're going to need some pendant lights here to achieve the task lighting below. You know, as we look at the furniture layout, there's probably a table that sits in the center of the space and either the table is this way or the table is this way. Well, it would be nice if the lighting, if the pendant lights could sort of react and change based on, you know, how we're orienting the table or how we want to use it or how the season is different. Maybe we want to take the pendant and, and move it out of the way. Maybe it needs to be over here. Maybe it wants to be up in the loft. Maybe it wants to be sort of centered here or centered here. And so what I thought was we could do this really simple thing where, um, you know, as you might see in a workshop or a, a uh, you know, a woodworking shop, metal shop, they have these sort of cords that are attached to the ceiling and then the cord can be moved and pinned at different locations. So that's my idea. Now, as we look back and, and think about how this might play into the three, you know, the three general components of a lighting plan. We have the ambient light, which we know during the daytime will be coming from the windows and the glazing in the center bay here and the skylights above. But at night we need to provide some level of, of ambient light and also for these loft spaces here on the end. And so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to create some wall sconces that will sit along this edge mounted to the wall. And because we have this old ordering system here, it's nice just to put one in each one of those bays. And I'm going to put one on this side too so we can balance the light. It's always a good idea to balance light 
so that you're not ending up with, with glare. Now we have plenty of light coming in here and I think this, actually this orientation of wall sconces here, whether they're lighting up or they're lighting down, will provide plenty of light for the space. As a general guideline, if you don't know actually how much light to, to put into a space, you can take the area, the floor area of the space you're trying to light and uh, multiply that by 1.5 to get the, um, to get just a general wattage for your fixtures. Now, um, this particular space, this center space is about 300 square feet. So if we multiply that by 1.5, we end up with uh, 450 watts of fixtures. Now, each one of these wall sconces, and I just want to talk about that for a moment, the wall sconce I'm going to be using is a lamp holder, and essentially the luminaire fits in to this spot at the top, screws into this spot up at the top, and this will fit a PAR 38 fixture, which sort of looks like, and you've probably seen them uh, on landscape lighting a lot, they look like this, they have a sort of long neck, and they have the threads down at the bottom here, and they provide light like that. So that'll plug into the top of this. And this fixture is then changeable in the same way that the pendant fixtures at the above here that are acting as our task lighting for the workspace here. Those are changeable. So is this. So this has, this is about an $11 fixture. You can um, loosen this screw and this is able to pivot in one direction or another. It can turn this way. And so these fixtures on this wall can be facing up and illuminating this loft ceiling. And here they can be facing down and they can be illuminating the bookshelf area or they could be facing up and, and washing this wall. Um, and so there's, that's a nice tie-in. It's got an industrial feel to it. It's pretty inexpensive and it actually plainly shows how the power comes to the fixture and the luminaire itself, the lamp that provides light, is actually the thing that gives it its design rather than a glass shade or some other sort of thing. It's a real kind of modernist um, idea about lighting. You know, let the fixture actually be what it is, the, the lamp holder actually be what it is. So we've got our general illumination here. Now the lamps that this can hold for our ambient light, uh, they can hold up to 100 watts each. So if we total these up, that's about 600 watts of general illumination here. Now we said our basic uh, floor area calculation gave us a 450 figure. What I like to do is keep all of these fixtures on a dimmer switch and that will allow you to set the ambient light level, set the mood uh, however you want it to be. Um, and so that's the kind of, you know, it's okay to have a space over lamped, over, over lit, um, as long as you have some way of dimming it down and controlling that. Now the second thing we talked about was the task lighting. We did talk about these, these pendant pieces. And the third thing we talked about was the sort of accent lighting. And in this particular scheme, the accent and the task lighting are gonna be combined. Now I'll have a workspace over here, and obviously we have you know drum kit over on this end that was, as we talked about, and probably some recording equipment on this end. And this whole space is flanked by a sort of utilitarian layering of things. So I could picture plugging cell phones in and other devices in, printers, plotters, at the perimeter of these sort of you know darker flanking ends here. And so those are good areas where we run our receptacles there, and then we have the flexibility to plug in task lighting as we need it, or accent lighting as we want it. So in a small space, we're layering those three things together and coming up with the basic lighting plan. Now, um, as, we, as we talked earlier, some of the other things to think about here are switching. So when you're locating switches, um, you're gonna, you wanna think about how you actually enter a space and how you use the space. Here, because it's a simple plan, fairly straightforward application. Um, one thing that we didn't talk about was the outdoor lighting component here. We're gonna have an aimable fixture here that will wash this area. That's a code requirement, but it's also, you know, a safety thing and uh, something, something obviously that you want to consider. The interior light um, lighting for the storage spaces is just going to be through another one of these inexpensive wall sconces. These are indoor outdoor fixtures. They're all gasketed, um, and so they're perfectly safe to use outside. And at eleven dollars, I don't see a reason not to. Um, so as we look at this switching plan here, as you enter, obviously you want to sensibly locate the switches to enter and turn the switches on. Now you have to decide sort of where, what each switch is gonna control. I wanna be able to independently switch the pendant lights together, but I wanna be able to independently switch them from the wall sconces here. Now for simplicity's sake, I have linked all of the wall sconces together on one switch. 
And so each one of these will be connected to one switch that'll be at the right as you walk in and you'll switch that on and be able to control the light level there. Um, it's possible when you have a larger room to split up some of these banks. It does make the wiring and switching more complex and I wanna keep it um, fairly simple and straightforward. So we have a bank of switches that we've set up on the right side here. Um, it's always a good idea to think about, even though I'm not gonna be putting landscape lighting in, in uh, as I build the project right now, in the future, I wanna be able to provide for that because once these walls are insulated, it's really, um, it makes it much harder to put those switches in. And especially if they're connecting to a landscape component, you wanna be able to um, add conduit between the interior and the exterior. And, and easily be provi um, provide a way to hook up those landscape lights in the future. So you work out your switching here, and I think I'm just gonna stick with one sort of location here. Come up with a sensible ordering uh, system for where to place the sconces. We didn't talk about lighting these loft areas, but again, I'm using just the simple sconce again, and I'm locating it sort of centered on the gable end above these tiny windows. And, and by doing this, placing these lights in these different zones, as it gets dark in this space, as we're using this at night, these lights are positioned in a way that it mimics the lighting levels during the day. So these central lights here will mimic the light from the skylights because it's washing down from above. These will mimic the light that's coming in from the sides and they'll provide enough ambient light for using this space. I've provided a couple of receptacles in the loft area to plug in some accent or task lighting if someone wants a reading light next to a sleeping space up here. Um, or if something needs to be charged up there, that's why those are there. A couple other things to layer onto this plan. Obviously, we need to be thinking about how the HVAC unit comes and gets power. And so that gets shown on the electrical plan as well. And you want to think about how all of these components impact the exterior shell of the building. And so I've specified some flashing components so that the details are all called out and nothing is left to chance. Uh, last thing that we want to talk about is how power actually gets to the structure. This is a slab on grade and so it means you have to plan carefully for how power actually comes to the structure and comes up through the slab. So you need to set your conduit before you pour your floor slab and the floor slab is going to be one of the first things that's done. So this actually, this electrical plan needs to happen at a fairly early stage if you're doing a slab on grade. Any uh, slab related elements such as receptacles in the floor. Now I don't have any here. I'm contemplating it, but it's, uh, it's an added expense. And so I'm gonna try and, and make do without it. Uh, but obviously the electrical panel is a big deal. Now one of the things that I could mention about setting the electrical panel is uh, you wanna think about how your wiring, all of your wiring in the house is gonna come back to this one point. So if you can possibly locate it centrally, it makes running those wires and your individual circuits um, more efficient, more affordable. In this particular case, I've located the, ex the electrical panel on an exterior wall. Now I could have located it right here in the center of this storage area, but as I think about how this space might be used in the future, I wanna think about these walls as being able to be removed. Uh, so if someone wanted to turn this into a garage space in the future, you know, let's, let's say they wanted to turn this into a single car garage and access this point. If the electrical panel was here, it would not be possible to do that. So what I've done is just locate it on the exterior wall. And that way, in the future, this could be, this could act as a tractor storage area or uh, a place to store a car, um, that kind of thing. So it's just something to think about as you develop the electrical plan. Um, last thing I want to mention um, is as you're planning your, uh, your fixture devices and things like that, you know, I wanted to do an exposed uh, electrical outlet and a, a way to sort of express, again, these panels. Um, but actually, when you're expressing these, these boxes on the inside of the structure, you have to run all of your wiring in conduit, which I think is a great look. It's a utilitarian. It fits with the workshop concept. It's also pretty expensive. Um, so it has the utilitarian look, but it has a sort of champagne budget. So I'm not going to be doing that. We're going to go with regular plastic boxes. They're going to be set in the wall and we're going to be foaming the exterior wall system. We'll still use these, um, what I think are some pretty beautiful back plates. You know, these are a couple of dollars each. They're galvanized. They match the, um, Stone Co. light fixture that we've chosen. You have different options for these, whether they're round, which is you know, sort of what, what this one is, or they're rectangular, some are square. They're just kind of a nice detail, nice modernist industrial detail that will sort of accent all of the light fixtures. So I hope you've learned something looking at this lighting plan. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Thanks.